Thank you, Kimbra, and welcome everybody. I will try and uh, make this as you know, educational for you as I can in going through this. Uh, so today we're going to go through the human needs funds applicant training. Um, we'll be talking through how to get into the uh, applicant portal, how the registration process works for each of your applicant organizations, how to set up new users, um, walking through the application itself and how to submit the application. And then we'll talk a little bit at the end about, you know, what what's going to happen after the application submission process. So I do have a slideshow presentation. My plan for you all is to go through the slideshow um, fairly quickly. I'm not going to spend too much time within the slideshow itself. I want to jump into the actual product, show you the application, um, give you a look and feel for how the software itself works. Um, so I will go through this again. This is going to be made available to you all afterwards, so um, it's more you know a point of reference for while you have the application open. If you have any questions, you can always refer back to this. But again, kind of what we're going to go through is just looking at the opportunity information screen, how to register, navigating through the applicant portal where you set your new users up if you need to modify any organization information at any point where that can be done, and then completing the application and getting that submitted. So this is just a look at the opportunity information screen. This is going to show you all of the details of the actual application. This will be the first thing you see when uh, City of Everett makes the link available to all of the applicants via their website. Um, within this screen, you'll see a lot of the details um, about the application, how you can apply, uh, excuse me, the, you know, uh, qualifications need, that need to be met in order to apply, um, a lot of the dates that are associated with it. You also see the evaluation and scoring section that goes through the criteria about applicants, um, you know, qualifications in order to apply. The review and selection process talks a little, bit, a little about bit about what's going to happen um, after you have submitted your application and what the City of Everett team is going to go through and how they will review each of the proposals, uh, and then a little bit about the anticipated announcement dates. So once you do have that link and you get in, you'll see this screen. When you do click the apply button, if you have not previously registered for Amplifund, you will be charged with registering your applicant organization. Um, we want to make sure, and this is a, a pretty important thing, that you know applicant organizations only have one person register their organization, and then that person is then charged with setting up additional users for access to the application that has been started. So if you register multiple times, the system will assume that you're a different organization um, and that you're starting a different application. So we cannot connect those two applications. So it's very important that for each organization, you only register or complete the registration process one time for your organization. It's not an individual uh, user registration. It is an organization registration. So um, again, that's very important that each of your organizations only register one time and then that user will be set up to uh, or have the the appropriate rights to add additional users. So after clicking that apply button, uh, you will fall into the registration process where you know you'll be um, charged with adding some a new account information. I'll need an email address. You'll set up your password and confirm that password, uh, and then the contact organization information. So once you have registered, you'll, you know, I'll jump in and we'll see that here in a little bit, but you'll also have to modify your account information and add new users. There are two users within the applicant portal. Now, once you get into a full blown, so if your applications are approved and, and you, you know, are granted the, uh, or awarded the grant, you'll have the ability to modify some more um, user rights and capabilities, but within the applicant portal itself, there are two user roles, and these are important. And there's an editor and an administrator. So administrators have sort of full rights. They can add additional users. They can navigate through the whole application, and they can submit. Editors can modify the application. They have the ability to edit and add information anywhere on the application, but they will not have the ability to submit. So it is important that you know uh, when setting up new users, if everyone needs to 
submit or everyone needs the ability to submit that application, meaning it's final and you want anyone in your organization to have that ability, um, you will want to set everyone up as administrator. If only one person should be submitting the application, but multiple people should be contributing to the application, you would set them up as editors. Uh, and those roles can be modified by any administrator um, at any point as well. So while navigating through the application, there is a toolbar that'll show at the top of the screen using the check marks uh, will indicate that the section has been completed. You have a few options while you're on each of the forms or different sections as far as saving, marking as complete and saving as save and continue. So there are a lot of required fields that will be indicated with an asterisk on that field. Um, at any point, if you want to jump around the application and not lose the progress that you've made on that individual form or that individual section, you would want to save. So save will save your progress and you'll remain on the current page. If you save and continue, it will save your progress on that page, but you would move on to the next section or form. Um, so if you're you know, filling out your project information section, uh, you hit save and continue. It will take you into the application forms, application forms to budget, kind of following this, um, you know, red box down the line. If you have everything on the form or section marked as complete or everything is completed and you click mark as complete, it will indicate to the system that, you know, you have finished that section. You will not be able to mark a page as complete until all fields on that form have been completed. So if you attempt to mark as complete without having um, actually filled in all of the required fields, the system will give you an, an error. And I can show that here in a little bit that just says, you know, you can't mark as complete until all of the required fields um, have been completed. Within the budget section of the application, this is kind of a screenshot of it on the left. Um, there have been approved categories that were established by the city of um, Everett and within that you will need to add the budget line items by creating uh, by clicking the plus sign next to the appropriate category. So the total requested amount from your project information screen will need to be fully allocated within the budget um, before you're able to mark as complete. You can save your progress at any point in time, but you cannot mark the budget as complete until the overall requested amount has been fully allocated. There is a little overall budget cost that shows at the bottom and as you add your individual line items, it will subtract from the overall requested amount. In this example, I had requested $10,000 and add I, as I add budget lines to it, it would subtract from that $10,000 amount. So that's kind of how you can track your progress while you're creating your budget. Um, when you click the plus sign next to any of those expense categories, it will prompt you to enter the budget line item information. You have the ability to choose the category. Um, you'll provide a name for the individual budget line. You'll identify a direct cost. If there are non-grant fund costs associated, meaning cash match or in-kind costs, um, you can click the drop down and hit yes, and you'll be prompted to enter some additional information about whether it's a dollar amount or a percentage of the overall budget line item that um, needs to be added. There's also a narrative section. The narrative is not required, but uh, I think it is probably uh, recommended that you all provide some level of narrative. Kembra, um, I don't know if if you want to touch on that now or a little bit later, but I think um, you know the city of Everett has identified that they would like applicants to provide a narrative for each budget line item uh, that they are putting on their um, applications. Correct. Yes, so we would like um, some kind of narrative uh, description in there. It is not required in the field, but we would encourage it so that it allows for the committee to have a thorough review. Thank you. So moving forward, then we would get into the performance plan section where there are two perform proposed performance plan strategies for these strategies. Uh, each applicant will need to identify at least one goal. There are two goal types here. We have one that's a numeric, so your annual program service goal will be a numeric goal where you will need to provide a projected number of persons or households you plan to serve by the end of the year from the use of the requested funds. Uh, there's also a corresponding service accomplishment goal that is a narrative type goal. 
Um, so when entering a goal for or an achievement for this goal type, uh, you will just need to supply a narrative of how you plan to accomplish the goal uh, that should support your numeric program service goal. So those two goal types or these two strategies sort of go hand in hand. You'll have to provide a number that you plan to serve and then with the narrative describe how you plan to achieve that number essentially. Completing the application. Um, so once all sections have been completed and the check mark displays in that navigation timeline, so you can see in the example, all of those um, kind of sections of the application have been marked as complete. You will then be able to submit an application. Uh, that submit button that's kind of highlighted at the bottom of the screen that will be kind of grayed out until all of these sections of the application have been marked as complete. So um, if there is a target on any of those sections, like if I did not mark as complete one of my application forms, that submit button will not be able to be clicked. It will be grayed out. So until you mark as complete all sections and forms of the application, you will not be able to submit. Once you submit an application, it cannot be modified. Um, the city of Everett has the ability to reopen an application uh, but it is recommended basically that you, you know, make sure that once you submit, it's everything is there and, and it's ready to go. Um, next to the submit button, there is a review button, which will download the application as it has been completed by your organization so that you can review it external to the system if you want. So if there are additional members of your organization uh, who have not been set up as users who would like to review the application before the submission, you have the ability to download the application, review it external to the system, and then one person can be charged with coming in and clicking that submit button. There's also a prompt that will come up when you click the submit button that does say, are you sure you want to submit? Once you submit, no application changes can be made. Um, I'll get in a little bit more about the support after, but at this point, I'm actually going to jump into the system and I will kind of walk through what it looks like. Any questions so far, though? Greg, Greg, Greg if you're if you're asking, I can't. Yeah, I have I have one. Yes. Yeah. You ready? Uh, the performance plan that you have in your application. Is that a plan that's freelanced by the applicant or is it a plan that has standards set by someone else like the city or the CAC? Hello? I heard the question, Kembra. I don't know if that's something that you can answer. I don't I don't know the answer to that though. So I think that what I'm trying to understand, Greg, is you're asking, are we setting the measurements for the performance plan? Or is, is, right. the app, is that the question? Yeah, where's the plan come from? Does it come from the applicant or does it come from you? Or there's, is there some kind of metric that you guys are, I should no, say so, us? So the, performance plan, <laughs> yeah, so the performance plan section that's in the application is really kind of, um, it's taking the place of during, you know, when we have our application, we have what the proposed count, service count will be and what that measurement is. Mm -hmm. The way that it's laid out in Amplifund is the new is the new way it's going to capture and track those metrics that the applicant sets forth. So we've never set forth those measurements for them um, there. It's going to be based on their program, their project for that program year and the metrics that they believe that they're going to attain during that time. Um, I hope uh, Andrew's going to go into a little bit about how this is going to marry once it gets the award process later on in the discussion, but um, that is something that we will that the applicant will set forth. OK, thanks. Yeah. Good question. OK, so from the beginning of the PowerPoint, the screen should look somewhat familiar. When you follow the link that will be provided to you or um, can be found, I think, on the City of Everett website, you will be directed to this opportunity information screen screen will provide you with overall opportunity information, funding information. Currently, this is an example, so there is it's indicated that there's no total program funding, but that information will get updated for uh, you all on, on the real application. Um, some award information, submission information about open date, close date. Um, 
Close date is going to be very important. You'll want to mark that on your calendar. Um, at the point, you know, when we pass or surpass that date and time that's indicated within this section, you will not be able to submit your application. So if it was set for 931 at 5 p.m., if I went in at 501 or 502 p.m. and tried to click that submit button, it will also be grayed out. So uh, you'll you'll definitely want to put that time and date on your calendar and make sure your applications get submitted prior to that. In order to register for the opportunity itself when you click apply you will be prompted to log in if you have a login or register for the application if i click register that's when i'm prompted now to create a new organization account and again this is not your individual account well it is your individual account but you will just only register once per organization so your applicant organization only needs to register and then someone will be able to add additional users to it so i'll just provide test email here and go through the password as you fill it out you'll get check marks you can also see that there are only the fields that are required to have that asterisk next to them so you don't need to fill out all of the fields Within your contact information section, you have the ability to copy over some of that address stuff to your organization information if you provide it. So if I click same as above for my organization information, it will copy that information down here, providing an organization name. So And then I click register and it will take me to the screen where I need to read through it and agree to the terms of the Amplifund applicant portal. Once you accept those terms, you will be brought back to the opportunity information screen, but you'll now notice that I am logged in for my applicant organization. That's my username is my email and that applicant organization is for should reflect your particular applicant organization. If you click on this, it will bring a drop down where you now have the ability to access your account information. If you need to change your password, you also can log out. Within the account information section is where you will have the ability to modify anything for the account that you need. So if anything was incorrectly entered or needs to change, um, you have the ability to edit that. You also have the ability to add additional users. Currently, John Doe is the organization administrator for this applicant organization, but I can add additional users using the same kind of user information and contact information that was on that previous screen. Again, those two roles, editor and administrator. Editor has the ability to add information anywhere within the application itself, but cannot submit. Administrator can add any information anywhere in the application and has the ability to submit the application itself. Once you fill in all of this information and click invite, it will send an email to that user inviting them into this application. And they will also have to read through the agreement um, and click accept. There is a frequently asked question section as well. Um, this section just provides a help document guide. This is an Amplifund guide. This is not a City of Everett provided guide, so it will help navigate through the applicant portal, completing all of the individual sections um, and how to submit an application. But there will be no specifics here um, about the actual City of Everett human needs application itself. So going through the actual application now, once I click apply, it will bring me into the applicant, the application, and you'll see now I've got my two check marks. I've gone through my opportunity details. I've reviewed my evaluation and scoring screen. I'm now on the project information. The target up here will indicate what field or what 
section you are currently on. Within the project information section, you'll need to supply an application name, the amount that you were requesting, um, and then when we get into this, I'm actually going to kick it over to Kembra and talk a, a little bit about um, how much you were planning to contribute on the budget. So match and in kind, whether it's required um, and how all that will work. So I'm just going to give this a test application name and I will request $10,000 if I can type today. Um, so Kember, do you want to at this point talk a little bit about the contributions and how that wall work? Yes. So um, there's a little bit of feedback. Is there still feedback? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Andrew, I think my you mute your mic real quick for us. Great, thank you. So, um, as most applicants who have uh, applied for human needs funds uh, before are aware, we do typically do not require a match contribution for human needs funds. However, uh, this information here does tie to the budget, and when the citizen advisory committee is reviewing applications, it's very important for them to understand any other funds that are given to the specific program that is requesting funding for award so that they can look at the entirety of the operation of the financial operation of that specific program. And so what we're actually talking about here is not necessarily a required match, but really any of your agency's funds, a match from your agency that's being supported to this program. So it's really any other additional fund dollars um, that you have that are supporting this program need to go in under the cash match contributions. And that can be a mix of private and public dollars. We're not looking to break that down into what the funding source is. We just need to see, OK, if you're asking for $5,000 from the Human Needs Award, the program actually takes 50,000 to execute, and so we need to see where that other 50, 45,000 dollars is is coming from, or where that supports other tasks. Is it staff? Is it supplies? You know, what what are those other funds um, going towards in execution of the actual program? In the future, uh, we are going to probably anticipate using the uh, Amplifund for our federal and state awards as well, our applications as well. And those do have a match requirement. So I definitely just want people to understand that for human needs, we are still not requiring a match for human needs dollars. And it is only asking for understanding of what the program funding is overall. But for state and um, federal applications, there will be uh, the match requirements for that one. So you will see on this, uh, I think as we move forward, that there's no threshold or at least under the details for the opportunity, there was no threshold for the match for human needs. And that's because again, we're not requiring a match. We just want to see what additional funds are in the program. Any questions on that specifically? We're going to try and put this language in as much as we can in our website um, there are going to be faqs i know that andrew mentioned faqs under the help tab for uh, the amplifund site but our website will have a faq sheet on how to address ever specific um, items for this application the software but uh, if anybody else has any questions about the matching requirement at this time i would encourage you to ask going once going twice. OK, Andrew, why don't you take it away? All right, thank you. Um, so again, those fields like Kembra are going to show as a required field, but you are able to enter a zero dollar amount in there. So once you have completed all of the required fields on a form, you'll see that the Marcus complete button is now available to be clicked. When you do click it, you'll get a success, and then you have the ability to continue through the application. So once I'm completed with my project information section, I'll now receive a check mark. I'm now within the application form section. There are going to be two application forms that you will need to complete, a narrative section and an attachment section. The narrative section is um, somewhat lengthy, so I highly recommend as you're going through to save your progress as you as you um, are complete. So you don't need to do it all at one time. 
you always have the ability to save, um, exit the system and come back at another point and pick up where you had left off. Within this section, there are a number of different field types. You have just your basic text to entry. You also have narrative or um, descriptions like on the agency mission where you uh, have the ability to enter or copy and paste um, paragraphs of information. There are going to be some links that are also embedded within the application. So if you're answering the question, is your agency a minority owned business as defined by executive order 11625 and you don't know what 11625 is, there has been uh, a link provided for you so you can reference certain things throughout as well. I'm not going to go through this right now and fill it out. Uh, that would take me a little bit of time, but I will scroll through so you can sort of see all of this. Again, you have the ability um, when the link is made available to you to download the application and review it before you apply as well. If I attempt to mark as complete, I will get yelled at and say there's an application error. One or more required fields have invalid entries. So um, if you think you have completed it, you click mark as complete. Um, if you miss a field, you can scroll back through and look for the red text next to a question that said this field is required. Within the proposal attachments, there are a number of attachments that are required to be uploaded by your applicant organizations. Um, they are all here. Once you close, click the choose file, it will open up your local drive and you will select the appropriate document from your computer uh, or network and attach it. Moving into the budget section, you'll also notice now at the top, it's not showing a check mark within the project, or excuse me, within the application form section, meaning that I have not marked as complete all of the fields or forms within that section. Now I'm on the budget section. Again, here is that expense budget. I am charged with entering enough information or enough line item detail to allocate that $10,000 requested amount. As I click a plus sign, Next to one of the categories, I have the ability to now add a line item for supplies. There are instructions or a uh, narrative that's provided for each of these categories by the city of Everett that you can review. So supplies must directly support the services provided. You will need to provide a name for your line item. I'm going to add a thousand dollars worth of pencils. If you are again indicating that there are grant fund or non-grant funded amounts there's a drop down if you select yes you will be prompted to enter a cash match or in-kind value you have the ability to identify it via a dollar or a percentage of the total direct cost so if it is a percentage percentages need to be entered as a decimal so 0.2 would be 20 percent of the thousand is going to be cash match And then there is a narrative as well. These are for pencils. Please give better narratives than I'm demonstrating here. And then when you click create, that dollars will now show as grant funded. And it will subtract the thousand dollars from your total overall budget cost. So now I have nine thousand dollars that still need to be allocated for this application. If you have indicated that there is non grant funding that will also display within this revenue budget section down here. So you'll go through you can make modifications to any of the individual line items that you have added by clicking the pencil icon. If you need to remove or delete any line items, there is a trash can and that will remove that line item um, as well. So again, until this total overall budget cost is brought down to zero dollars, you will not be able to mark the budget as complete. And that error that's telling me right here will kind of indicate the same. The total overall budget cost must be zero dollars in order to mark this form as complete. I'm going to save and continue. Move into the performance plan section. Greg, did you have a question? You're muted you right now. Right? To, you, you must be able to see me. I can, I can see everyone. <laughs> okay. The cash match uh, thing you just did back, I think. Now, 
does that subtract from the total ten thousand dollars? If like if twenty percent is a cash match, which means a contribution right from the company that's non grant money. Correct. Is that what that? Right. Okay. So that's not that won't be subtracted from the ten thousand dollars then. So if I can jump back into this and I'll show you. So if I'm indicating that my direct cost is a thousand dollars and twenty yeah. percent of that is match, that means yeah. eight hundred dollars of that is going to be grant funded, and two hundred dollars right. of that thousand is for match. That comes from where's the match money come from? That's going to be additional funding that's outside of the award amount that you're requesting. So if you're requesting ten thousand, but your overall project is um, twelve thousand, that two thousand dollars extra needs to come from an additional source. That could be private funding. That could be an additional grant that you've received, and you're able to allocate funds from that grant towards this one. Um, that was kind of yeah. that was what Kember was explaining about. You know, you have the ability to utilize additional funds beyond what you're requesting um, but it is not but a you don't have to that's correct you don't have to do that match okay all right good that's all they're just there at, they being the city of everett is asking if you plan on using additional funds please indicate such but you don't have to identify where those additional funds are coming okay. from for, for this particular grant right. Um, you'll okay. also notice that now I, I did get an error or just a warning here that's saying the cash match total cannot exceed the cash match on the project information page. Because when I was filling out my project information, I requested uh -huh. 10,000, but I did not indicate that there was any match at all. So that's now right. that I'm on my budget and I'm trying to add $200 of match for my pencils, I'm getting that warning that's saying, hey, you're you're going over the amount that you said on the information page. So yeah. it will not let you over allocate. The system will not let you over allocate either um, grant funding or non grant funding amounts unless you've indicated such to match on that project information screen. Got it. Thank you. Now, when I remove that, that removes that warning as well. So you'll go through the budget and you'll add all of your individual line items under the appropriate category until your total overall budget cost is zero dollars, meaning you've completely allocated what you requested within the project information section. On the performance plan section, again, there is the strategies. We have two strategies, a narrative strategy and, excuse me, um, a numeric strategy and a narrative strategy that goes along with your numeric. So my numeric is please provide the projected number of total persons um, or households served by the end of the year through use of these funds. If I add my goal, I will need to provide it a name and a description. So my number to be achieved, I plan on 50 households um, to be served. If your applications are approved, so Greg, this goes a little bit along what you were asking before, these goals will be part of your grant and you will be charged with entering achievements uh, against them throughout the year. So as you serve your individual households or your persons throughout the grant year, you can add achievements against this annual program service goal uh, and report back directly to City of Everett who will kind of be able to see that throughout the grant year as you enter those achievements against this numeric goal. Yeah, I'm just hoping that uh, somewhere in this process, uh, if Kimbra sees a goal that's kind of not a good goal or that she could point it out to them. Um, in other words, if their goal is so weak, uh, I hope that someone uh, can say, hey, we need some kind of a, a realistic goal from you folks. Yeah, and those, that's, those that's, that's a great point. And those, Greg, will be addressed during both the application review process as well as the post-award management yeah. side, because um, while they'll have the ability to copy pre-award goals, so your submission goals over to post-award, um, they can also charge you with entering new goals or modifying the goal that was uh, proposed yeah. within the application itself. Good. 
Good. So that that's how we add a numeric goal. It's basically just giving it a name, identifying that number to be achieved, uh, and providing a description for that. And then you will be charged with entering a narrative goal as well. So for the narrative goal, it's just a name and a narrative. So through the use of the 2022 human needs funds, we plan to increase food accessibility for low income residents. And I can call this my food accessibility goal. Once I have entered at least one goal for each of these two strategies, I now have the ability to mark my performance plan section as complete. So there is a requirement that at least one goal be entered for both of these strategies. Applicants, you have the ability to enter multiple goals. Um, you know, I don't your, your feet aren't going to be held to the fire necessarily on everything that you enter, but you have the ability to propose as many goals uh, for these two strategies as you choose. Once I've marked as kind of in progress, excuse me, marked as complete this performance plan section, I can then move forward to the submit screen. So I had mentioned before until I have check marks all the way across the top, I will not be able to submit my application and you'll see that here from the submit screen. I don't have the ability to click that submit button. It does not uh, appear green for me at this point. You'll also see that there are two um, kind of red saying my budget has errors that require my attention. Well, I didn't allocate my full 10,000 requested amount, so um, that's what's wrong with my budget. I have forms containing required fields which have not been completed, meaning my application forms. I did not complete both of the forms. I didn't actually attach anything and I didn't fill out the application itself, so um, the system will not allow me to submit my application at this time. I do have the ability, however, right now to download and review the application as I have filled it out. So if I click review, it will give me a PDF uh, download of the application as I have filled it out to this point. At this point, you know, really, we've, we've kind of walked through everything about the applicant portal. Kind of talk through the opportunity details, the project information section, and how that project information section ties to the application form, the budget, the performance plans. Uh, we've talked through the submission process. I now want to speak a little bit about what's going to happen after the submission process. So we have set up a application review workflow for the city of Everett where there will be a review team. Uh, Kembra had mentioned earlier they've already sort of received their training um, on what to do once all of the applications get in. There's a number of different steps uh, within that review process that they will accomplish um, by going through all of the applications, putting them kind of um, holistically looking at all of them next to each other and determining which which applications will be selected for award. At the point your application has been selected for award, you will receive an email uh, from the city of Everett outlining kind of what's going on, when everything will happen. They'll establish the award within Amplifund. You will also then receive an email from Amplifund inviting you into the system. Um, and we'll, we'll have probably an additional session then about what the post award management side looks like, how we're going to be entering expenses against the budget that we've proposed, how we're going to add achievements against the, the uh, performance plan goals that we've proposed, uh, as well as you know submitting payment requests and the payment management side of everything. Are there any questions? at this point about the applicant portal um, or completing any section of this application. Okay. Um, Kembra, is there anything additional that I did not touch on that you would like me to touch on or do you have any additional information for everyone on the call? Um, I don't think that there's anything that wasn't touched on that uh, that you've gone over. I think that there's um, this is fairly comprehensive. This is a good snapshot of what our applicants are going to start seeing when they start using the system. Uh, again, I would encourage anybody that does have questions right now or even thinking about a question if you're not comfortable with presenting it to try and enter it in the chat and we can um, 
and we can present it for you, but this is a good time to access uh, the expert on the software while we have him. Um, I do want to mention that this is the application and award for human needs are going to be tracked through Amplifund. However, uh, the city is still working on a, um, a separate software uh, that is held by another department that may or may not um, uh, provide electronic contracts and agreements. Our funding sources are not at that stage yet, and so you will have an electronic or this um, a virtual platform to be able to track your application and award in. However, your agreement will still be paper form to the best of our knowledge at this time. So just understand that we're still a little bit in a hybrid state when it comes to utilizing these uh, the software and the other processes that we have for the city for awards. Um, I do also want to mention that uh, applicants will have uh, the next two weeks to go into the system and work into the system to get familiar with it. Andrew has put up on the site a couple of resources that um, I would encourage you to go ahead and check out, especially with the Zendesk. There are some really uh, helpful guides that are already in there. Um, but we will start to uh, incorporate not only this training, but also additional specific FAQs and guides related to Everett's application forms on the website. And I will put that link in our chat as soon as I am done rattling uh, off uh, this next item. And that is that um, the formal notice of funding availability and open opportunity uh, for this to be opened will occur on October 18th. Um, and you will have until November 12th to work on your application. And so we want to be able to accommodate a good four weeks for applicants to be um, able and to upload their application and supporting documents. Uh, city staff are absolutely available to work with you on your application through this time. Uh, however, you also have the ability to work directly with Amplifund if there is a system issue and it's not specifically related to the application forms that we have. Um, following the closure of the uh, opportunity for application period on November 12th, we will go through and do staff review uh, the week of the 15th of November. Um, staff will be looking at your applications. We will be going through and seeing if there's anything that is either uh, not addressed or needs more information from you at that time, and we will work with the applicant to then go back and open your application up. Um, for a limited time period. So the most important thing that I would take away from this new software is that we're definitely getting a little bit more firm on our deadline dates. Um, in the past, this used to be a paper uh, version and um, you could drop everything off, whether it was right at the last minute, five or 502 or whatever that might be. But um, since this is now a virtual platform, we are looking at hard deadline dates for submission. So please, uh, try to do as much as you can at the beginning and let us know if you run into any issues. Um, we will not be able to extend the opportunity for late applications. So I just want to make sure that everyone's comfortable with the system as soon as uh, earlier on in the process as possible. Um, I think that that's all that I may have at this time. Uh, so again, if there are any other residual questions from applicants, uh, please go ahead and pose them. But otherwise, I will be putting our um, let me just put our web page for uh, where we will start to uh, put all of the FAQ links um, and uh, general information for the city's uh, resources um, on uh, the city website. So just know that that link is now in the chat and you can also just search grant management software on the Everett website in the search box and that will pull up this web page as well. So continue to check back in with us for this recording for additional documentation um, to support the efforts for application and just let staff know if there are any specific questions on the application forms. Thank you, Kembra. And as well, I will supply the PDF version of kind of the slide deck that we were walking through today. Uh, and they will most likely make that available on their website for you as well. So if at any point during the application you would like to reference back to this, uh, that will be made available to you. And again, um, you have the ability to access the support portal. It's amplifund.zendesk.com, or you can send a support ticket directly to 
myself or my staff at support at amplifund.zendesk.com. Um, tickets that are received will be responded to within two hours during our normal business hours. That's 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Any requests that are submitted or received outside of those hours will be addressed the following morning. And thank you everyone for your time today. I appreciate it.